We're out in a cornfield right now. This corn here is really little, so it's hard to identify some of the nutrient deficiencies we'll see later on in the year, but we wanted to talk about that a little bit today. When you are out scouting your corn, what should you be looking for in terms of nutrient deficiencies? So where we want to start right here is phosphorus deficiency. What's that look like in corn? Because it does show up a lot of times in very small corn. Well, what I'm looking for, first of all, is if there's anything that doesn't look quite right on that corn plant, I want to investigate and find out what's going on. Yep. Now, if you've got some leaves that show some purpling, well, that should just be something right away that you're saying, wow, I got to find out why my leaves are purpling because my first suspicion is going to be that we're having an issue with phosphorus uptake in that plant and that's why we're seeing some purpling. Yeah, now one of the things that we will tell you is there are a lot of other things that can turn corn purple or turn corn yellow. So you have to do a little investigation and you might want to just send some plants in for leaf tissue analysis. Darren and I do that ourselves because it's hard to know for sure what you're dealing with until you find out the plant study. Well, here's one thing that's going to give you a good indication. Where on the plant are leaves looking different or looking yep. a different color? For example, with phosphorus, we're going to see that starting at the bottom of the plant and working its way up. Now, you may say, well, why is that going to be? Why is it always going to be that hard, fast rule? Well, the reason why is because phosphorus is mobile within the plant. It doesn't move around very much in the soil. Phosphorus pretty much stays where it's put in the ground, but once it's in the plant, the plant can move that phosphorus around wherever it needs it, and where it will move it is from the oldest growth to the newest growth. And the same thing can happen with nitrogen and potassium as well. So your N, P, and K, those are mobile nutrients in the plant, so when you see nutrient deficiencies, they will always be in the lowest leaves first. Let's contrast that with nutrients that are immobile within the plant. So once the plant has brought them in, they stay where they're put. Some examples would be sulfur and many of the micronutrients. When plants bring in those types of nutrients, they will lock in really tightly in the leaves where they are brought in at, but then when new growth comes out the top, if the plant cannot extract micronutrients or sulfur from the soil, those leaves are gonna be short. And when leaves are short, they're gonna start showing deficiency symptoms when the problem gets bad. I do wanna point this out. When you first start becoming deficient in a nutrient, the plant may not show any visible sign at it all. It will not show any sign at all. It's not going to be until later on when you've got extreme deficiencies that it shows up in the plant. So once you are seeing some symptomology, it's probably too late to save it with a foliar application. It's probably something where you say, wow, I really was short this year. I'm going to have to address that with my fertility program for my next crop. Yeah, because there are a lot of people that their corn will turn yellow and they'll say, oh, I better get out there and throw some nitrogen on. And they do and that greens the corn back up. So they think, oh, I'm, I'm okay. Well, you know what, you're not okay. You already gave up some yield there. You don't want your plant to be suffering ever from anything. Now I realize that's not real world. Your plant's always gonna suffer from something, but as much as you can, control those issues that you've got on your farm, handle the N, P, and K, handle the sulfur and the micronutrients before you start seeing major nutrient deficiencies. But let's talk about what those major and micronutrient deficiencies look like in the plant if they do get to be extreme. We talked about phosphorus turning some leaves purple, but how about nitrogen and potassium? These are two big nutrients that your crop needs large amounts of, and we are very commonly seeing some deficiencies all across the upper Midwest. On corn leaves, these two nutrients are often mistaken for each other when it comes to deficiency symptoms. When we're looking for nitrogen deficiencies, what you'll see is some yellowing that'll eventually turn into browning, starting from the tip of the leaf and working its way up the midrib in kind of a V-shaped pattern. With potassium, it's totally different. It's still that lower leaf, but it's going to be on the outside edges of the leaf and working its way in. So the midrib will be the last thing that's going to be turning yellow or brown when it's a potassium deficiency, whereas with the nitrogen deficiency, it's going to start moving right up that midrib. Okay, now let's look at the immobile nutrients in plants, the micronutrients, sulfur. If you see a yellowing on the top leaves of the plant, that's most likely a micronutrient or sulfur deficiency. Now, a lot of people will say, well, if you see striping, then it's sulfur deficiency. If you see some more yellowing besides the striping, it's some yellow kind of almost blotches, then it's probably zinc deficiency. Don't buy into any of that, okay? Even for Darren and me, we really don't know if it's sulfur, if it's zinc, if it's something else, boron. A lot of those nutrient deficiencies look very similar. Again, 
Sulfur, micronutrient deficiencies, you'll see those at the top leaves of the plant and it will turn the leaves yellow. I do get a lot of questions from farmers and maybe you have questions as well about what these nutrient deficiencies look like, how do I address them in my fields, how do I find them. A good thing to do is get started doing some plant tissue analysis on your farm where you're regularly out there checking those leaves, sending in samples, getting nutrient analysis done. Then you're comfortable with the whole procedure and you can also head off some of these nutrient deficiencies before they get really bad. Well that's the biggest thing is you want to catch nutrient deficiencies before you can see them because by the time you see those deficiencies you're giving up a big number in yield. It might be 20% of your yield, 40% of your yield, it's huge. If you do plant tissue analysis, sure you might still lose a little bit of yield but if the plant tissue analysis says you're running short, you can catch it early, you can go out into the field and add some more nutrients if you think you need to. Well here's the other side of that. You need to to do that plant tissue analysis throughout the growing season. Pick just one or two spots in a couple of your fields and do it every week. Take some tissue analysis every single week through the growing season, maybe for an eight or 10 or 12 week time period. That way you can see how these things move. Well, once again, it's very important that you're scouting your fields. It's also really important that you're doing plant tissue analysis so you can catch nutrient deficiencies before they show up visibly in your field. Well, another thing you don't want to show up visibly in your field is weeds like our Weed of the Week. We'll tell you how to control it on your farm coming up later in the show.